Welcome to Pure Aqua's Learning Center. In this series of videos, we will demonstrate membrane replacement. We will begin by removing the existing old membranes and demonstrating how the new membranes can be loaded into the pressure vessels. The tools and components needed to complete a successful membrane replacement are shown here. Beginning from the right-hand side, we have our Dow 111 silicon-based lubricant, a generic flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, the Allen key needed to open up these end caps. Other tools might be needed for different end caps. Masking tape, a clean rag, and of course the membranes needed for the particular system. So before we begin the membrane uh, replacement here, we'd like to point out a few things. So what Pure Aqua does is we label each membrane system with the model, with the membrane model used. So upon replacement in a few years after the system has been operation, the correct models of membranes are used to prevent any, you know, strange operating conditions. And just equally as important is noting the flow direction on each pressure vessel. So it's very important that the labels for flow are, are followed to ensure that the new membranes are loaded correctly to prevent any damage or failure to the new membranes. Some membrane manufacturers physically mark the flow direction on the membrane body. While some manufacturers do not physically mark the flow direction on the membranes, locating the position of the brine seal will indicate that. So typically the feed flow of the membrane is where the brine seal is located. That is very important because again, if the membranes are loaded in the incorrect direction, damage will occur to these new membranes. Before even beginning any, any part of this process, it is very important for the operator to determine it's safe to replace these membranes. Most importantly, the system must be completely powered down and depressurized. Again, the system must be powered down and depressurized. You know, all pressure gauges can be visually looked at and making sure that they're at zero PSI. All flows as well are at zero gallons a minute. With that, we are safe to begin the membrane replacement. So step one of the membrane replacement will be to remove any interconnecting fittings that connect the pressure vessels together that are installed on the end caps. So in this particular case, we are using three quarter inch CTEC fittings. Of course, other fittings are used depending on the size of the membranes or the size of the system. Regardless of the interconnecting fittings used, there will be some kind of technique needed to remove the fittings in order to properly remove the end caps. So to begin uh, removing these CTEC fittings, you know, locate these retaining uh, rings or locks here around the fitting directly connected to the end cap. So to remove these, you must simultaneously pull up and push down here because if, if you just pull up, the fitting of course will not be removed because it's, 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 a, it's a safety mechanism here. So pushing down on this retaining ring here and simultaneously pulling up on both ends multiple times will get the interconnecting fittings completely removed as shown here. Step two will be to remove these retaining clips um, installed on the, the top of the end caps. So what these retaining clips do, of course, is they hold the end cap in place when the system is pressurized. So using the, the correct size Allen key, these, this hex screw will be, of course, loosened and the, the retaining clip can be removed that way. And of course, this will be replicated as many times as needed, depending on how many membranes are gonna get replaced. In this particular demonstration, we're doing two membranes, so we'll remove four retaining clips. Once all the retaining clips are removed, the next step will be to remove the end caps. Step three involves removing the end cap of each respective pressure vessel. But before that, one particular tip we, we, we recommend doing is covering the needle nose plier with some kind of adhesive or some tape or cloth to prevent any kind of damage to the end cap. So once the needle nose pliers or any kind of pliers are covered uh, to prevent any damage to the end caps, you know, you would go ahead now and remove these end caps. You would kind of have to pull out. So there's notches here located on the end cap, positioning the, the pliers in the correct position, applying the right amount of pressure to ensure that the pliers don't slip or hit, you know, hit anybody's face. Um, it's very important to do that. So now it's, it's a good idea to kind of pull back and forth and if that's done correctly, the end cap comes out very easily. Um, if Again, if these were properly installed end caps previously, there would be lubricant already on there, which allows for easy removal at the time of replacement. So after removing, of course, the first end cap, the next end caps that require removal will need to be removed. So 
performing the same exact steps by making, ensuring that the needle nose pliers are covered and position them in the right orientation here on the end cap. And again, applying the right amount of pressure here as well and kind of moving these, this end cap back and forth and, and slowly pulling up as well successfully removes the other end cap. And of course, the same exact steps can be followed as mentioned, depending on how many end caps need to be removed. Step four would be the membrane removal. Again, here we would recommend using the needle nose pliers, locating the center port here, which is the permeate port or permeate collector um, on these membranes, which is, the, which is the dead center of the membranes. So we would uh, position these needle nose pliers as shown here and firmly gripping and slowly pulling up. Again, these membranes typically have water, but we've drained the system of water, so, which would make them a little bit heavier. And, and if they're dirty, of course, and fouled, that would make them also heavier. And we would recommend wearing gloves here because these membranes do have fiberglass around them. And once the membrane, of course, is past the pressure vessel here, you can just use your hands to kind of pull up. And when, once that's done, the membrane has been successfully removed. Again, since we're demonstrating two membrane removal here and replacement, we'll, we'll remove the second membrane here on the second pressure vessel. So again, positioning these needle nose pliers at the center of the membrane here where the permeate is collected, firmly gripping and pulling up, removes the membrane here as well. Step five would be the membrane preparation, which we would lubricate three different locations or positions here on the membrane. One would be the brine seal, and then that's the first point of lubrication. And then the second and third point of lubrication would be the permeate tube. Before beginning the step of the actual membrane loading into the pressure vessels, there's one point we would like to clarify. Now, as mentioned before, each pressure vessel has a, a unique flow direction, either of course up or down, because these pressure vessels are installed vertically. Um, these, in some cases, the membranes can be loaded to, from the pressure to, into the pressure vessels from the bottom if the flow is pointing up, for example. And if the flow is pointing down, the, the membrane can be loaded from the top to prevent the brine seal uh, from flipping. However, um, we typically do load all of our membranes on vertical installations uh, from the top and that has been proven to be completely fine from our end here. So step six of the membrane installation would be installing or inserting the membranes into the pressure vessels. Before doing so, again, as mentioned before, it's important to verify the replacement membrane model matches that labeled on the pressure vessels to ensure the replacement membranes are correct to ensure um, proper operation of the system after replacement. And equally as important is the flow direction. Again, this membrane feed flow direction is going up, so we will match that flow direction on both the pressure vessel and the membrane. So once those two steps have been completed, we can go ahead and insert the membrane into the pressure vessel very slowly and kind of keeping our hand on slowly guiding the membrane into the pressure vessel. Um, that, that would basically complete the step of successfully inserting the membrane into the pressure vessel. Loading the next membrane into the, each res to the respective pressure vessel, uh, we'll follow the same steps as before, ensuring the model number matches that which is required for the system. The flow direction on the membrane matches that of the pressure vessel. And with that, we, we are ready to load this membrane into the pressure vessel. Now, one thing, as, as mentioned before, we can use needle nose pliers to slowly insert the membrane into the pressure vessel to, to prevent the membrane from slamming on the bottom and damaging potentially the end caps. Once that's done, you can slightly push the membrane to ensure it's actually on the bottom of the vessel. Um, and with that, that kind of in, uh, completes the membrane loading into the pressure vessels. Again, these same steps can be carried over as many times as needed based on how many pressure vessels or membranes there are on the system. Step seven of the membrane installation would be to reassemble and lubricate the end caps and install the, each respective fitting back as it was originally, of course, installed. So to do so, there are two O-rings to lubricate on these end caps. We have the head seal, which is the larger O-ring on the outer part of the end cap, and we have the smaller O-ring here, which is the permeate O-ring. Um, something to point out here now, if the operator feels it is necessary to lubricate the end caps that were not removed, they can be removed and lubricated as well, just for preventative maintenance. Uh, in this particular demonstration, we have not done that, but that can be done. So again, we would lubricate two O-rings on each end cap, reinstall each end cap on each respective pressure vessel, and of course insert 
the connecting uh, fittings and reinstall the retaining rings. So once the pressure vessel end caps, retaining clips and respective fittings have been properly reinstalled and securely fastened, that essentially completes the membrane uh, loading tutorial here. So one important note we would like to point out is now that the system has brand new membranes installed, essentially these would need to be flushed before uh, the, the process or clean water is used back into the process. Again, this is very similar to the, what's initially done at startup with a new system because there's a preservative in each membrane that will need to be flushed out uh, as per the membrane manufacturer's guidelines. This wraps up our Learning Center video and we thank you for watching.